Hey guys, it's Sam, and today we're going to talk about the tonicity of the tear film. But before we can do that, just a quick overview of the tear film. So the tear film has pretty much three distinct layers, right? You'll see different versions of this, but the most external or the most anterior layer, you know, closer to the environment is the lipid layer, right? And the lipid layer is uh, created by the meibomian glands. So next you have the aqueous layer, which is the middle watery layer. It's 98% it's of the tear film. That's, that's secreted by the lacrimal glands and the accessory lacrimal glands. Closest to the cornea, you have the mucoid or mucin layer, which is secreted by goblet cells of the conjunctiva. And in biology, we talk, talk about structure governing function. So it's easy to remember the purpose of these, right? Because you have the outer lipid layer, and as you can imagine, that, that fatty lipid layer of sorts prevents evaporation of the tear film, right? So when we talk about meibomian gland dysfunction, we're talking about the, the lipid layer um, not performing how it should, so it, the tear film evaporates. Uh, the watery layer of the tear film, you know, you're going to have most of your, your enzymes and your um, white blood cells, your leukocytes and your, your proteins and things like that in the tear film. Things for oxygen, nourishment for the cornea itself. And then the, mu the mucoid or mucin layer, it turns the hydrophobic surface of the cornea, like it repels water, into a hydrophilic surface. So it's sticky, it's mucus, so it, it, it allows the tear film to stay on the eye. So you can see how the structure of the tear film governs the function. But the tear film has a specific a tonicity to it. And tonicity is defined as the concentration of one solution as compared to the concentration of another solution. All right, so it's, it's talking about how many uh, solutes, uh, how many particles are in the solution itself. But the tonicity of the tear film is 0.9% NaCl. That's sodium chloride, and sodium chloride are just fancy words for salt. All right, so that's something to remember for your NCLE. 0.9% NaCl, that's two points right there, you've got it. Um, so, but when we talk about an isotonic solution, we're talking about iso, the prefix iso means the same. Iso, same. So the same tonicity. So it's talking about the tonicity of the tear film as compared to another solution, such as uh, a multi-purpose solution, or um, you could have uh, saline, right? So non-preservative saline that we use with scleral lenses and just you know rinsing a lens. That is an isotonic solution, meaning it has the same tonicity, the same NaCl sodium chloride content as the tear film. So we have isotonic, then we have hypertonic, and hypotonic. These are very important uh, words to remember. So isotonic means the same. When we talk about a, a hypertonic, H-Y-P-E-R, Right? Just think of it increased, it's hyper. So that means it has a higher uh, solute concentration than it would for like the tear film. So it's, it's more salt. So think of like the ocean. The ocean is a hypertonic solution in relation to our tear film, right? Because there's a higher concentration of salt. So the ocean's maybe 3% sodium chloride and you know, we're 0.9% in our, in our a precorneal tear film. Hypotonic, you know, a common example might be tap water or, you know, our shower. Hypotonic solution, so we're talking about it has less solutes, it has a lower osmolarity than um, would our tear film. So osmolarity is talking about the amount of solute in the solution. So how many particles are in the solution? So with the tear film, we will also talk about osmolarity. So a problem that people have is increased osmolarity. So um, whereas the tear film might have an osmolarity count of 302, 
if we have a lack of tear production, like an aqueous tear deficiency, so our lacrimal glands aren't producing enough tears, our solute content can go up and we'll have an increased osmolarity. And I'm about to talk about why, kind of bring this together and why that could cause an issue for the eye and especially for our contact lens wearers. So we, we mentioned that isotonic means the same concentration of sodium chloride, right? So, but when we think of osmosis and osmolarity, there's a, a general rule we need to remember. I'm gonna draw a, a little diagram. Uh, okay, so let's say we have water in these two glasses here that are, they have a, a semi-permeable membrane in between them. Let's say there's a really high solute content in this side, right? So it has a high osmolarity. Let's say it's much lower on this side. And one thing that is, is a rule is that the water content, so the water in the solution itself, will always want to transfer over to the side with more solute in it, with more osmolarity to it. So what will happen is um, this water will start to go over to this side. Um, kind of like a way you can remember it is if you're eating a lot of salt and you're intaking a lot of salt, your, your body's gonna retain more water, right? So we can use like a diuretic or something to, to flush out the excess um, salt and make that water will leave with it. So just something to remember is that water or solution will always follow the higher salt content that NACL. And why this is important is because an issue, um, let's say somebody has Sjogren's uh, syndrome, and I'm going to attempt to spell this, S-J-O-G-R. All right, I think that's right, S-J-O-G-R-E-N-S. So what is what that is, that's a condition where it affects your lacrimal glands to where you don't produce enough tears. So what happens is your osmolarity count goes up, you have more solutes than you do you know, the tears, it's a higher ratio. So the cornea, what's gonna happen is, um, because the tear film has a higher solute concentration, the water will actually, um, you can think of it as leaving the cornea so your eyes become dry, if that makes sense. Um, because remember, if there's not that isotonic balance where water isn't going one way or the other, um, then it's gonna draw to the solutes. So that water will actually leave the cornea and, and you'll, you'll have a hard time maintaining a moist environment for the cornea. So that's an aqueous tear deficiency. You know, and you're gonna use things like, you know, uh, rewetting drops or high viscosity lubrication, or you could be a little more invasive like punctal plugs. Uh, there are different medications that will also decrease your tear production, like we mentioned diuretics or antihistamines. So there are different things that will create a dry eye environment for the patient. But when we wear contact lenses, and this is where it kind of gets interesting. So um, rule of thumb is don't wear your contact lenses in water, not, not supposed to wear them while you're showering, definitely not in like a natural body of water like a lake or an ocean, because you know one of the main reasons is bacteria right? We have Pseudomonas, um, we have Acanthamoeba, right? Pseudomonas is very dangerous. It's, it's the most prevalent type of, you know, bacterial infection of the cornea. Uh, then you have Staphylococcus, but then um, with Acanthamoeba, keratitis, that's an infection, um, super, super dangerous, um, very common in lakes and things like that. And what happens is um, it will actually form cysts in the eye from this amoeba, and those are very hard to fight with any type of, you know, antibacterial um, or, or um, different uh, drugs and remedies that they have. So it's hard to it's hard to defeat acanthamoeba, and a lot of times it, it leads to permanent vision loss. That's why we don't want to wear our lenses in a body of water. If you do, um, you want to remove them right away. If it's a lens that's not a daily disposable, you definitely want to, you know, use a very strong enzyme cleaner, or you know, and make sure that it's it's clean prior to wearing it again. But the best practice is uh, just to not swim in contact lenses or go into water. But I digress. What I'm talking about, the other reason besides the bacteria component, is we have this whole tonicity component. 
So um, has anyone ever worn their contact lenses while showering? You know, I, I'm guilty of it, not supposed to do it, but what's happening, which is very interesting, is, you know, that I'm gonna draw a shower here just because I can. I really don't even know if it'll benefit the discussion at all. So shower head, um, there's a contact lens. So the we said that the, the water is hypotonic, All right, so tap water is generally hypotonic, meaning it has a lower solute concentration, right? It has a lower osmolarity than what our tear film is, and which is mimicked in the contact lens solution, right? So we have that, you know, 0.9% NaCl. So what's going to happen in the shower is this hypotonic water is going to want to invade, it's going to want to penetrate into your contact lens matrix. And what's going to happen is the lens itself is going to swell and it's going to increase in diameter. And we know that when a lens increases in diameter, it fits tighter, it fits steeper. So it's going to be really hard to get that lens off your eye. So if you've ever taken a bath or a shower in your contact lenses and they've, and they've gotten wet, you'll notice that they are harder to come off of your eye, that they'll want to almost adhere to your eye. That's why it's really recommended to use a, a re-wetting or lubrication drop before attempting to remove them. And again, best practice just not to wear them in the shower. But what we have there is, a, is osmosis, right? So the water transferring from um, the lower osmolarity to the higher osmolarity. So from a hypotonic solution to a hypertonic, H-Y-P-E-R, hypertonic. Um, and I won't draw up an opposite is when you're in the ocean, which is a very hypertonic solution, right? High salt content. Then the lenses will actually, the water will draw out of your lenses. So it'll dry out the lens and they'll actually become looser. So you'd be more inclined to lose a lens in the ocean. Um, that's not as likely to occur because of lens edge design and things like that. But you're still, you're still inviting different bacteria um, and unnatural um, things that can bond to the, the lens itself that can be dangerous to the eye. Um, so again, it's very important when considering the tear film. You know, we're talking about a lot of this has to do with the quality of the tear film, right? And so we know we measure the quality of the tear film with the breakup time, right? So that's um, slit lamp uh, illumination, you're going to use uh, fluorescein sodium fluoride and you're just going to measure how long it takes between blinks before you find the first break in the tear film. So with quantity like producing enough tears to make sure that the solute isn't in too high of a concentration that's going to be your Schirmer's test right so that's going to uh, test for the quantity of tears that are produced. Um, again, I hope this video is helpful. If it was interesting to you or if it helped you in your NCLE studies, go ahead and like it and subscribe to the channel and share it with your friends. And um, I love your comments and suggestions. If you have any videos that you'd like me to put out, just uh, put a little comment down there and I'll be, I'll be glad and obliged to uh, respond with the video. Thank you.